Today I'm showing you how to use deep scraping and edit in to read a company's entire site and write the highest quality personal cold email openers so you can get more replies with less effort. Let's get into it. So a quick summary of what we're actually gonna go over is uh, we're gonna get some leads in the door. So we're gonna use Apollo, which is just a lead aggregator essentially. So you can search for a specific type of leads that, you're, that you want, titles, companies, industries, employee counts, etc. cetera. And um, generally the issue that most people have with Apollo is that it's a little bit pricey for what you actually receive. So many people like myself actually use Apify, which is a third party scraper in which you can actually scrape many different platforms such as Apollo. Apollo, but you could also use it for Instagram, LinkedIn, etc. But to get the information and the lead details that are important to you for your actual cold email campaigns or any type of outreach that you actually do to uh, make sure that you get that revenue going through the door. And um, what we'll do is using that information, we will run it through a hyper personalized flow like this. I'll make sure to make it super simple, very basic for even the most beginner to understand so it doesn't get technical or complicated so that we can actually get their information. And then you'll see here we add have it on this Google Sheets, which is a personalization icebreaker cold email using NIN. And we have variables like first name, last name, email, company name, website, headline, location, phone number. I have that sensor so you guys can reach out to the people. And then an icebreaker that is uh, very good and hyper personalized to the individual so that you have all the details on there. And um, ultimately, we'll get that information so we can upload it onto a cold emailing software like Instantly, which is the software that I use. So you can ultimately get a result similar like this um, depending on the campaign that you're actually running so you could get high reply rates as low as three four percent and upwards of 12 15 percent depending on the people that you're targeting and the actual prompt that you put in the chat window for AI personalization so let's get into it and we'll go into deep dive of exactly how it works without getting too technical so you know what's happening make sure I'll keep it very surface level and simple as I possibly can so that this is applicable to everyone um, no matter if this is your first time using NIN completely, so it's super simple, okay? So let's do a little bit of a test. So you have that there and good to go. And as a reminder, everything is be available for you in the description. So first things that it'll do when you actually trigger it, it'll search for the URL that you have available, which is here, essentially, whatever filters you set here, that'll show in the URL. I just basically pasted that in there. What it's gonna do is it's gonna call that Apify actor. It's gonna scrape the uh, that list of leads, essentially. And we only want the ones that have a functional website and a functional email to pass through. And that'll go to the next step. That's why I went from 100 to 91. It'll scrape the website so that we can get all their important information, right? They know, we know their ideal uh, persona. We know their desires, their pain points, etc. So we can use it to our advantage. And under there, they'll have sublinks, contact us, about us, etc. And we're going to extract all those links there from those sublinks within their website so we can get a deep understanding of their business, their desires, everything like that. So we can get specifics on what, what it is that they care about, right? And you'll see as it's going through, we will actually get the specific lead information. So we have it nice and organized. Don't worry about the technical side on either side, but first name, last name, email, website URL, etc. just like we were showing here. And you'll start to see it's already starting to populate. So let's go ahead and pause that for a moment. So then once we extract all that information that we had before, right, since we have all the links from that main website, right, if we go to a, a basic website and you have contact us, about us, and all these other sublinks that a company may have, what it's doing here in this very next part, it will actually scrape the main website, right? So a uh, specific URL that you have there as far as a client. So it'll scrape included.ai first. And then it'll notice that, oh, look, we have a product page. Look, we have a solutions page. We have an integrations page. We have a company page, resources page. All of these pages have specific information that is important to, oh, looks like they got an issue on their website. But all of these pages have information that is relevant and important to this company, included.ai. So what the flow is going to do, basically, after it has the, the parent scrape, included.ai, it's going to go and loop through product solutions, integrations, company, etc., to just to get more information on the business so that when we write our personalized uh, icebreaker, it's as personalized and detailed as possible to make sure we get a good reply rate, open rate, and everything like that so that we can get more leads and more clients through the door, okay? So um, 
it will essentially link through all those uh, links, those sublinks on the website. And what it's doing here, just so we have a, a better understanding of it from step by step, is we have a lot of links that are being fed in and a lot of different, see, as we spoke about, the specific sublinks that we have from each lead. That, and um, so we're essentially going through each one of those leads and then we're filtering it so that it only has specific types of links that are there without any sort of duplicates. This is making sure that um, the links that are going through are of a specific format so that as you're cycling through three, five, 10, 50, 100,000 leads, et cetera, that it's a consistent output and consistent format that's going through there. And then as you saw previously here, you see how there's uh, several uh, duplicates, request demo, request demo, request demo, for example, we're making sure that any sort of duplicates that are on there, such as the one that we just spoke about, request demo, are filtered out so that we do not waste any scraping or time or AI tokens, since we're gonna be in, uh, investing in open API in flowing, in actually processing those so it's made super, super simple. Okay, and then this is that second part essentially where once we have all those links, then we will scrape those individual sublinks that we were talking about, product, uh, solutions, integrations, etc. in the case of this specific website and um, making sure that we have all that information. After that, we're essentially formatting it to a much easier uh, to read format from a standard HTML to Markdown. Again, if you're a beginner, don't even worry about what that even means. Basically, if you look at before and after, before HTML has all this extra text, it doesn't even, not that it doesn't make sense, but it's just not relevant. It's just extra stuff for a plain language model. Whereas here, you'll see in Markdown, it's much more usable because it's actual words, language, and links that you can utilize. So that saves a lot of tokens when we're feeding that information into um, OpenAI or any LLM for that matter. So what we have here, what's happening after we're scraping all those different layers of links, again, with the purpose of getting the maximum personalization and the maximum chance of a prospect or a lead opening and ultimately replying to our email so that they can ultimately become uh, interested in booking a call and becoming your client ultimately, right? So. The prompt that we have here, you can use whichever model right now, the latest model is GPT 4.1, you can use 4.0, or by the time you watch this video, you can use a different one that uh, is the latest at this point, right? So I have it simple as far as the system message. So system message, basically, again, if you're totally new to this, is just what the system is identifying as. This is not when you're talking to ChatGPT, the message you're sending or what you're receiving. This is more so backend type of stuff of you are identifying as a helpful, intelligent website scraping assistant, essentially, okay? Now the prompt, this is a user prompt. So basically this is, imagine if you're in ChatGPT and you're talking directly to it, right? When I type in here, hello, how are you? Right? This is a user prompt. Okay. What ChatGPT responds to me is called an assistant prompt. Okay. So this is where it goes in. So this is me sending it to him, a user prompt. You provide a markdown script, a website page. Your task is to provide a two paragraph site description of what this page is about. Return in this JSON format. We have site, again, this is formatted in JSON. You don't have to worry about the details. This will be available to you in the description, but you can just follow along so you can pick up those details. And then site description, your uh, details and abstract goes here. Rules, your extras, your extract, sorry, should be comprehensive, similar level of detail, as a breakdown description to publish literature, use a straightforward, strong tone of voice. And if it is empty, just say no result. So if a scrape essentially fails and there's no information that comes out, then we have an output that it can say, which is just no result, basically, just to cover that potential error that can happen. Um, so another way that we actually save money um, as far as tokens and save time as far as output is sometimes some websites are like super long, especially if they're deep into SEO and they have a million backlinks or something like that, is that we limit the amount of characters that we scrape. Again, I'm not trying to lose you into the technical side of it. I'm, I'll explain it as simply and as basic as possible for you. 
Um, but essentially what we're doing here is we're limiting it to the first 6,000 characters in the website. So you'll see here it's going through there because if the website is say, I don't know, 50,000 characters it might be, then essentially you are scraping way more information than you may even need, especially since our output is just gonna be a short icebreaker on there. So if I didn't have that, or if you didn't have that, one, this flow could take a lot longer to actually process, and two, from feeding all that information into OpenAI, you would essentially use more tokens and it would cost far more money. So this is a way to save a bunch of money and a bunch of time without sacrificing a tremendous amount of of output, right? So, and you'll see here, it got all this information, again, through Markdown. Don't have to worry about what that means. It's just a format of data. And then it outputs like that from the user assistant prompt that we spoke about with ChatGPT. It gave a nice description about what it is that they do, what they care about, etc., so that we can go back and then we get all those little components that we have there and essentially aggregate it or put the information together so that we can actually feed it into the icebreaker. So the icebreaker is actually going to get the information previously and um, ultimately get an output for the icebreaker that's gonna get results in our instantly campaign. So we'll see here. We just scraped a set of web pages from a business called. This is a variable it'll automatically fill in that we got from the filter uh, previously right here, website and emails. So I have that here for the actual organization name, right? Uh, this is a different lead, that's why it says Sansama, but essentially it's this variable right here, organization name. Your task is to craft engaging, tailor openers for a cold outreach campaign that makes the recipient feel the message is uniquely written for them. Our spawn using this JSON format, icebreaker, a name, really liked thing, also noticed related thing, thought was sharp, wanted to float something your way. Hope it's cool. By the way, uh, sla backslash n, backslash n is essentially a new line. So when you see these uh, spaces like this between a paragraph, uh, that's essentially what this means. Okay, so you don't have to worry too much about that. Hope it's cool, but I did a deep dive in your site and I get the sense that another thing really matters to you, or at least that's my take based on the emphasis on four thing. A while back, I put something together that I think aligns. Long story short, it's a system that helps your audience get result using AI based method. It's pretty lean, get repl gets replies, and I think it fits with implied belief. Use a clear, brief tone, relaxed but sharp, keep the opener human, informal, and personal, avoid boilerplate. Shorten company and location names naturally, ABC instead of ABC Co. SoCal instead of Southern California, etc. Reference small, non-obvious website details and avoid generic flattery. The message should read like someone who browses multiple pages and is making a thoughtful intro, not scraping, okay? So that's what we have there as far as the output. And you can see here what an example would look like. Hey, Ashtush. And then let's actually show you the, the clean representative uh, representation of what that looks like. So you'll see here, uh, let's actually do the same one that we just had there open. Hey, Ashtush, I really liked how cleanly your portfolio site showcases both product and founder stories. Also notice the subtle use of grayscale visuals to keep the focus on the content. I thought that was sharp. I wanted to float something your way. Hope it's cool, but... I took some time digging through your site and I get the sense that founder-led storytelling really matters to you, or at least that's my take based on how prominently you feature past ventures and their narratives. A while back, I put something together that I think aligns. Long story short, it's a system that helps early stage teams get warm leads using AI personalized outreach. It's pretty lean, gets replies, and I think it fits with your belief in clarity and founder signal. Right, So that is a type of message that gets replies, it gets open where people are like, oh my God, how do they know this stuff? They definitely went on my site, they know what I'm about, they know that I'm talking about you know, past ventures and narratives and or they're talking about early stage teams, it's probably important to this, to this company. Right, and it makes all the difference as far as somebody seeing that type of a uh, output, so that they know what's actually important to them. Right, so this is the site right there. It essentially got all this information that we have here to get a, a message drafted that makes the most sense for this individual that we have here. So you can see how crazy this can really get, especially when you're sending this across, you know, a hundred, five hundred, a thousand, ten thousand 
leads that you have going out to get a tremendous amount of reply rate. So it'll actually go through all those different uh, links within that one website um, so that we can get as much context, nuance, information of each lead as possible. And then it'll just feed it into uh, the Google Sheet, as we said before, where it's very easy to add a Google Sheet into uh, your actual campaigns and everything that you have here instantly, right? If you wanted to add some some leads, you could easily do that on here without any sort of issues. Just when you're on a specific campaign, then you go on leads, add leads, add a Google Sheet, and then you'd be essentially good to go, adding those Google Sheet leads right onto there. So yeah, it'll loop over, go to the lead number two, just like you saw previously, and do essentially the same process, extract all the information from the various sub components of their website, generate a hyper personalized message, and then ultimately put it in that Google Sheet so you could upload it in there and then get to sending so that you can actually, again, get those super high reply rates and get responses to get that business flow. And so I hope that was useful for you guys. Again, if you want this available to you, go ahead and check the description and we'll get those details going. If there's anything specific you wanna see, leave a comment down below. Remember to like, subscribe, and definitely comment to let me know what you wanna see next and hope you have an incredible day. Take care, bye-bye.